Ah, Steins Gate. It is good to be back to this one. Steins Gate was the first show I reviewed on YouTube, so I feel it is only right that I come back and review the second iteration in the series. Well, there is a lot to say about it. I took over 14 pages of notes while watching it, and yeah, how do I compress this into a review that actually makes sense? Well, watch and find out. I am a big fan of the original Steins Gate. It has its flaws, which I'll get into a bit later, but it tells a one-of-a-kind story filled with lots of emotion and suspense and just everything I love. If you are new to the franchise as a whole, Steins Gate is a show about a self-proclaimed mad scientist named Okabe who ends up inventing a way to send text messages back in time. But he soon learns that meddling with time can have dire consequences for those closest to him, and the world as a whole too. Much of the show is about Okabe trying to undo his mistakes and to reach a world where everyone can live happily. And like most stories, eventually Okabe reaches his goal, but not without a lot of failure and a lot of suffering. So much so that he is on the verge of giving up near the end. Steins Gate Zero explores what would happen if Okabe did, in fact, give up. But due to the whole time travel thing, the actions of Okabe here in Zero are what allowed the original story to have its happy ending. And that's the best way to explain Steins Gate and Zero without spoiling either of them much, at least. So to understand my thoughts on Zero, you need to understand my thoughts on the original. As I said before, I like it. I love the use of time travel because it's just such a cool concept and the thriller parts were done wonderfully. Plus, Okabe is my favorite character in all of anime. The time travel parts make the story more complicated and it was cool just seeing how these different timelines and threads throughout all of them tie together. But it does have its issues. For one, some of the scientific aspects make no sense. When it comes to science fiction anime, especially the serious ones, I value realism or at least plausibility. But like many science fiction anime, or just stories in general, Steins Gate does fall short here. Another place it fell short was the heavy focus on the harem aspects, which took away from the whole time travel thriller thing that I like. Like, I'm fine with romance, I even didn't like the romance here. But it's not the reason I watch the show, so when they spend a lot of the middle arc on a harem instead of the exciting stuff, well, yeah, that was disappointing. Then I also felt that we did not see much of the larger conflict that was brewing and would take place in the future. And lastly, the happy ending kind of seemed to come out of nowhere for Okabe, and while yes, he did suffer a lot to get here, it just felt a bit too convenient how it all ended up. So, moving on to Zero, I was hoping it would fix these things. Probably not the scientific realism part, but the other three, there was a good chance it could do these better. Like it could move away from the harem storytelling, flesh out more of the world, and even just by existing, it justifies the way the original got to the end. So automatically it's one out of three, kind of. And in fact, it did succeed in all of them, eventually. It took a long time for the show to really like find its footing and capture what I liked about Steins Gate, the time travel thriller Okabe be mad scientist thing. Up until episode 15, I just was very underwhelmed with the show in general. Yeah, some interesting things were happening, and I did kind of want to see more, but there just wasn't any power to it. In fact, there are just times I was just plain bored, wanted to almost drop the show. There was some humor, but it fell flat, and there were slice of life moments that were mediocre, and even the big emotional moments it was building to just felt shallow, like it was purely emotion, that's all it was. There are a lot of questions being raised, but no answers being given, so I felt the plot was just like meandering about meandering. Yeah, I don't have a good word for that. A great example of this is the romance between Daru and Yuki. Daru is an interesting enough side character, and then Yuki is very minor that really doesn't do much for the story. But we got an episode about their relationship that I just had no interest in. I don't care about the romance aspects of the show. I don't care about Yuki. I guess Daru is okay. But this felt rather pointless. And yes, I know the show kind of tries to justify, but even that justification was kind of stupid. There were also a lot of what just felt like contrived plot points. For example, the whole focus on Mozart and his rival Saliori, which was constantly brought up to compare Kurisu and Maho and how they parallel them. And, well, it's an interesting idea, I guess, but it's not clever or interesting if they keep having to remind us of this every single time. Or there's also the convergence points, or points of convergence. I wrote both of them down, and this always confuses me in my script. Anyway, these points of convergence are basically an event that cannot be stopped by manipulating time. Like, it'll happen no matter what. Well, 
Kind of. In Steins Gate, the time travel mainly works through world line shifting. The world line is basically a timeline of all the events from past to future. But if a character changes the past, the world line will shift to be one that will fit the chain set of events. No one notices the world line changing, they just think that's the way the world always was. The exception being Okabe because he's the main character and has the power to remember. Anyway, there are two types of world lines in Steins Gate. The Alpha world lines and the Beta world lines. All the world lines of one type are similar, though they have small differences. However, some events are guaranteed to happen as long as you are in that type of world line, which are called points of convergence. For example, we learn that Okabe will die in the year 2025 in the beta world line because that's a point of convergence there. So the points of convergence are a very convenient way to get around the whole butterfly event of manipulating time. Typically, a small change would have big ripples, thereby changing big events. Both the big events Happening to be a point of convergence, this is no longer an issue, therefore just hand-waving some of the struggles with the time travel story. And it just happens that all these major events that Okabe is trying to stop are the points of convergence. Which, yeah. It raises the question of if there's a higher power manipulating time in forcing these points of convergence. But this is something that's never really explored or given an answer to, even if it's implied. And it even goes against the line in the opening that states there is no god. So it's like, is there? Is there not? If there isn't, they just throw this explanation in. If there is, they really don't explain how or why that divine whatever works in this show. So, yeah. There's also a lot of science and technology here just that doesn't make any sense. Like compressing data with a mini black hole. Or, the, or how the AI works that's a focus of much of the story of Steins Gate Zero. Really, that's not how any of these things work at all. And since the show is trying to be a serious story taking place in modern times, it really hurts the show. Well, at least it does t- for me to a degree. But I am a computer scientist, so I know some things about AI, memory compression... Admittedly not about time travel, but still. So maybe I'm unique and this bugs me more than it would other random people. Moving on. And then my last issue with the show is just how some things didn't make any sense. Or at least if they did make sense, it wasn't explained well enough for me to like understand it all. For example, the very last part of the show, like, why was that needed? Or how do all the paradoxes work for the time travel? Or like, Kagari's song? And yeah. Okay. I think I covered most of my issues with the show. I will admit, while I did talk about them for a while, most of them are pretty minor. Other than the dull start and middle, because if a show can get me excited, do issues really matter? I don't think so. They'd be nitpicks at most. So that means all a show has to do to like cover up all these is to tell a story that gets me excited. And well, from episode 16 on... Steins Gate Zero filled me with excitement. It's rare that a show has such a dramatic shift in quality. It went from meh to kind of interesting to holy crap, this is awesome. I must watch the next episode now. Why did I agree to watch Conception of Shampoo tonight? What do you mean the last episode isn't dubbed yet? I'm caught up now. I want to see the final episode dubbed. So yeah, we had some raw and powerful character drama really brought to life through all of Okabe's pain. The conflict between the characters here made perfect sense, or the heightened emotions just fit, and I could perfectly understand why the characters were acting the way they were, and how this fueled the conflict between them. We finally started getting answers too, with a number of plot twists that all kind of like wrapped up in one, which I admit I kind of saw coming, but they still did some very unique ways of doing this twist in a way that only Steinsgate could. Hopefully that makes sense, if you, and you guys know what I'm talking about if you've seen the show. There's also some surprisingly good action throughout this part of the show mainly, but also some of the early parts too, which, yeah, I like action. They're fun. What I really liked about these last few episodes was how they showed Okabe jumping into action. Before this point, he had given up, resigned himself to this world, knowing that any attempt to change it would probably just make things worse. But with the events here, in one event in particular, he sees he cannot afford to give up. Okabe is a broken character, going forward out of pure desperation here. I mentioned before that he is my favorite character in anime, and this is why. Yes, his mad scientist persona is fun, but there's so much more to him than that. Though, of course, as we get to the end of Zero, 
we finally see him ask for his lab coat, donning it once more. And all this to make a better world for him and his friends. There is such a joy at seeing him back like this. Like, we knew that this is where Steins Gate Zero had to end up eventually. But even so, knowing it was coming, there's just such a great joy at seeing him back like this, challenging fate, spouting nonsense, and doing the impossible in a way that would make him feel right at home in a trigger anime. He is an insane fun character, but because we know so much about what he has been through and what lies beneath his absurd everything, we know who he is and... Yeah, it's just amazing. Another thing I like about the show is that we get more of a glimpse into the war in the future, which lets the story just be told in a different way than normal. This kind of fixes my issue with the original where we didn't see this, so yeah, cool to see here. And I mentioned before that the harem aspects of Steins Gate really annoyed me, and fortunately they weren't here in Steins Gate Zero. All the characters were focusing on their own goals, and yes, there might have been some sort of attraction to Okabe from the various characters, it was never the focus, though. I especially liked how they handled Suzo here, who was a really active in Steins Gate Zero. I liked her character and concept in the original, but they didn't really do much with that. But she really got a lot of good chances to shine here, and most of the action did involve her, so that's more of a plus for her. There were some other characters that I wanted to get more time to shine, but I felt they all got at least something. And that ties into the ideas of friendship that were all throughout the show. And of course, I'm a sucker for a good friendship story. I especially liked how Okabe learned to lean on his friends through this. Like all main characters, he cares deeply for his friends and will do anything for them. But he learns here that he cannot do everything. There are times where he just has to accept what they can do, their sacrifice for him, so that they can all reach the ending that they want. I also want to take a moment to talk about the music. There are times in the show where it felt just very standard visual novel, boring, meh, whatever. But there are also a few times where the show was able to use insert songs, both original to Steins Gate Zero and also from things like the visual novel and the original anime. Like there is a event where you could see how Steins Gate Zero connected back to the original and I predicted they would use the uh, first anime's opening song there and they did. Which was awesome. Predictable, yes, but that was the perfect way to do it. I also really liked the first ending of Zero just because of how somber it was, which fit Okabe perfectly. So yeah, a lot to like with this one. It just sucks that it took so long for the sh great stuff to really show up. If the whole show was as good as those last eight episodes, it would be one of my favorite anime of the year easily, if not of all time. As it was, though... I still say the show is good, and maybe the slow start is kind of justified because it just shows how Okabe is going through the motions of life until he is given that push to get going again. So to conclude the review, do I recommend Steins Gate Zero and Steins Gate as a whole? The original series, yes. Despite my issues, it's very thrilling, very unique, and Okabe is amazing, so yeah, easy recommendation there. But for Zero, it's harder for me to say. Obviously, don't start here because you'll be completely lost. Probably, at least. Actually, I wonder if I can convince my brother to start off with Zero. Or Mighty Pie. My brother doesn't watch things when I tell him to, for whatever reason. Anyway, assuming you like Steins Gate, should you also watch Zero? Again, I will say yes. It takes a while to get going, and it is not as good as the original. But I like how it hones in on a defeated Okabe and provides a backdrop to the rest of the series as a whole. Plus, I liked how to flesh out the world, not to mention just the plain awesome parts. You probably will not like it as much as the original. Don't go in expecting to. But considering I did have so much fun with Zero, especially near the ending, well, how could I not recommend it? Anyway, I will see you all next time.